great so now i want to introduce a notion of something called the optimal value function so any questions about the the bellman equations all crystal clear right so if i give you an mdp and ask you to form the bellman equation solve it and give me the value function v pi can i do that i'll give you a pi also can you solve it and give me a v pi huh maybe yeah if there's so many values to compute it will be hard hello computers Oh, I'm going to at some point I'm going to give you like MDPs with millions of states and ask you to compute value functions for that. Don't try to do that with pencil and paper, right? <laughs> so well, maybe we should give them the head management program. You think we should? Did you do the head management when you did the course? You don't think so? Okay. Fine. so that's the, that's the problem that we formulated when i was uh, when i was a ta for uh, andy right uh, so he wanted people to appreciate how hard it is for uh, uh, how hard it is to solve dynamic programming I mean, uh, how how hard it is to solve mdps which are large mdps and this was a problem that was inspired by a real life problem uh, some uh, sheep or farmers like dairy farmers in new zealand actually solved okay so so they had lots of cows and they had to decide went to milk cows and uh, you know when went to use cows for something else my god in india it's now becoming a political statement right <laughs> but uh, yeah so okay sheep sheep okay <laughs> so so when when you when you milk the cow and uh, when do you uh, retire the cows you know so so they have to figure out so let's assume that cows have a retirement home And, and and so that's a plus that's a problem so then the cows could be young you know they could be in breedable uh, they could be old i mean there were like something like 14 or 17 different states that they had the cows be in right and then they have rewards like if you can milk the cow in a particular state then you get so much milk you know if you milk a cow in a later state the milk comes down blah 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 right so a whole bunch of things and there is a small probability that old what have been classified as old cows also have calf you know I mean, so basically they become mil- mil- milkable and, and so all kinds of very complex situation and somebody actually wrote a paper out of it wrote a research paper out of solving this problem how do you cast it as a as an mdp and then uh, come up with a way of solving it because when uh, in that case when you actually cast it as an mdp you ended up with um, like a few million variables few million states not variables a few million states and how do you go about solving that problem it was not not at all clear so what we did was we came up with a very simplified version of it so where there instead of like 17 states there are three states in which the cows could be right and the transition dynamics were much much simplified right so it could from young it could become breedable and it could become old and then from old it could become breedable again so it doesn't become young right so uh, so so there like a very few transition and so on and so forth but it still turns out that you have to for computing the exact transition probabilities right uh, you have to come up with a combinatorial summation right it's it's actually it's, it turns out to be incredibly hard to get the right transition probabilities just the p alone that right? everything else is simple we give you what the state is we give you what the action is right uh, just coming up with the p and the r the exact close expression for p and r itself turns out to be very very hard problem right and it's not a, it's not so there are i don't know about 300 states or something or 158 states it's a small problem right but computing the transition probability even when it is just 158 states computing the transition probability turns out to require a combinatorial sum right so it's it's, it's a little tricky so many people actually fail in getting the right transition probability they would write the correct code for solving the problem right but then they would not know how to compute the transition probability just to get you to appreciate the difficulty of coming up with that p and therefore you will appreciate why reinforcement learning algorithms are useful because they can work without the p <coughs> so what is optimal here now what what am i talking about as being optimal so we never talked about that so far right so what is optimality in the context of uh, mdps 
or in the context of RL. So we, we already talked about optimality in the context of RL. What is optimality in the context of RL? I want a pi <coughs> such that for no other pi can I get a better return than expected return than this pi. Right, so I want a pi. Right, so and I want a pi that is the best over all pi. What should be the quantity here? But that is not defined. We know that. Right, so the expectation over return doesn't make sense. So what should I do? I should qualify it over a state right I should talk about where I start the return and then I can take expectations over that or whatever but even better I can do this point wise so what do I mean by that I can say I need something like this pi 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 Thanks. Yeah. This is on the fly translation problems. Edition 1 has RT, capital RT is written. Okay. And edition 2, G, capital GT is written. Anyway. So, this is this is what I am looking for, right? And we know what that quantity inside there is. So point wise I am trying to find max over pi v pi of s for all s right. So this is I want a state uh, I mean I want a policy that achieves the maximum value for every state right. So and I am going to call this yeah uh, I am going to call this pi star right if I uh, yeah I can do arg max. So one thing, one caveat to note here is that argmax might not return a unique pi. That could be multiple policies for which this maxima is achieved. In which case, any one of them can be called the optimal policy. So there is no the optimal policy, right? But there is a optimal policy. That could be multiple optimal policies. Right? Just remember that. And one very simple example I can give you. Think of uh, like a grid world. So this is something we'll revisit often. Right. Let us say that every state uh, has 4 actions, I can go up, down, left or right, right and every action is going to get a reward of minus 1, right and uh, in a deterministic world, so if I go up, I will move up by 1 square and if I go right, I will go right by 1 square and so on and so forth like, like in the indicated directions or you could think of a stochastic world where you try to go up with probability 0.9, I will go up the probability point 0.1 I will just stay where I am and you can think of this as some wheels slipping when I mean, you have a board that is trying to move forward and with some probability the wheels slip and then you stay in the same place and you probably have to try moving again and again until you succeed right. So you could think of it that way right. So that is a stochastic world and every time you make an action regardless of whether you move or not you get a minus 1 right. So if you try to go up in the top row what will happen? Will you stay there? You will stay there whether the action succeeds or not, you will stay there and you will get a reward of minus 1. Okay. So, and this is an episodic task, right? The whole thing will end when you reach the state mark G. Right. So, what will be behaving optimally here be I'll get to G as quickly as possible. Right. So, the shortest path to G. Right. So, that that is be the optimal way of behaving in this world, right. So, how many optimal ways are there of behaving in this world? A policy is a mapping from states to actions, right? Does not matter where I start from, right? This is the Markovness, okay, right? So, we are assuming everything is Markov, it really should not depend on where I start from, right? 
so so regardless of where i start from for example when i'm here the optimal action is to go this way right i don't care whether i started here and came here or whether i'm starting here or not right regardless of where i'm starting the action is like that likewise okay things become interesting from here the number of optimal policies we have huh? so any one of these states i can choose any one of those actions right so basically i have now 12 states and i can to choose any of the two actions in those 12 states right so i have a huge number of optimal policies right and you can convince yourself these are optimal because they will take me to the expected number of steps if it's a deterministic world i can tell you exactly how many steps it will take me but if it's a stochastic world depending on what is the probability of failure of the action right uh, i'll have some probability of reaching the goal right so great so okay there are too many optimal policies is there something common across all these policies Mm, okay can you can you rephrase that the number of steps it moves to the right is the same in all the policies oh. <laughs> okay <laughs> not in terms of steps in terms of something else that we know the net reward is the same net reward the expected reward is going to be the same so for any state regardless of what is the optimal policy i choose to execute the value of that state will be the same correct is it clear regardless of the policy i choose to execute the value of the state is going to be the same correct so i can write this and i got rid of the pi star here i'm going to call this v star and v star is unique given an mdp v star will be unique right pi star need not be unique but regardless of how many different pi stars you have right v star is going to be the same whichever pi star you consider v pi star will be the same so regardless of v pi star regardless of the pi star you choose i'm going to call the optimal value function as v star okay so this is called the so this is an optimal policy it's optimal value function okay so is it is it clear there's only one thing which you guys should be asking me now how do i know that the same pi will reach the max across all s so if you have finite mdps it's actually straight forward to show that okay if you have uh, continuous mdps right then it becomes a little trickier uh, so we we will discuss this when i'm actually starting the proofs in the next class why is it that there exists a optimal policy at all right so we'll we'll discuss this in the next class when i'm talking about proofs right so right now we'll try to do the equivalent of bellman equations for v star right i mean like likewise i can define an optimal value function for q what would be the optimal value function for q
सॉरी No, 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 there's nothing. There's something that sound doesn't that sound right, right? So what is the problem here? So we need to put that pi thing here. So what I what I want you to appreciate here is that even though I'm talking about optimal policies, I still the first action I take is A. Right? So first action I take is always A, whether I'm talking about optimal. So it's only after I take A I behave optimally. So that is why this max is after. In fact, I can remove the max from here and I can insert it. Anything that comes before that is not influenced by the max, right? Because I take a fixed action A. Okay, this is something which you have to keep in mind. So whenever you talk about Q star, S comma A, right? The A is still fixed. It might not be the best A to do, right? In fact, I can have a Q star A defined for this action here. Right, I can have a Q star A defined for this action also. For each one of these actions, I can have a Q star defined. Right, you see that? So the Q star of the down action will essentially be minus 1 plus V star of going from here to the goal. Right, and the Q star of this action will be minus 1 plus the V star of going here, assuming it is deterministic. Otherwise, it will be 0.9 minus 1 plus 0.9 times the value of going from here and 0.1 times the value of going from here, if it is stochastic. Right? So, so, I can think of defining Q star for even suboptimal action. This is one thing which I want to keep in mind. So, it is not like Q star is defined only for optimal actions. Okay. Is it clear? Okay, great. So, now we have these things. So, let us try to see what we can do. So, I want to do V star of S, yes, right? I want to find V star of S. Uh, so, what would V star of S be equal to, you think, in terms of Q star? There is no pi here. So, what do you think V star of S will be in terms of Q star? So what does Q star tell me? If I take action A and behave optimally thereafter, right? So what can V star be? I mean that is essentially behaving optimally from the current state, right? So I'm going to look at, okay, which one, whatever gives me the best reward on taking A and then behaving optimally thereafter, right? So think about what this expression is, right? This expression is essentially, okay, I behave according to A, and after that I behave optimally. Right? So, that is essentially this expression. Right? 
minutes and I'm taking a max here which essentially means that okay which is the action that gives me this the best of this expression and okay, that I can't behave more optimally than that because it's only the first action I have a choice here after that I'm assuming I'm behaving optimally whatever is the optimal behavior right so I'm not talking about recovering the optimal behavior yet right I'm only talking about finding what the optimal value function is right so I'm assuming after action A I'm behaving optimally so now the only thing I need to figure out is what is action A and I need to pick that action A says that when I add the reward for taking immediate reward for taking action A and the return for behaving optimally thereafter I get the most right so this is essentially very intuitive way of defining what the optimal value function is now I can expand this I can say it's max over A summation S prime And that's what max over pi is, right? Max over pi v pi is v star. So not the t star is prime. Does it clear how we got that? Right. So this is called the Bellman optimality equation for v star. Likewise, you can write a Bellman optimality equation for Q star. Q star need not be unique across all of the points. They have to be. Why not unique? If some policies over there would give a higher Q star to going right than going Why? Right. Why would it? Some policy, there is no question of some policy will give you a higher policy. I mean, why? I have given you all the optimal policies. Tell me which one will do that. So just, just think about it. If there is some policy that will do that, then I will basically change the action to that. I mean, that has to be optimal, right? If there is if going right is does not have the same value as going up. If going up has a higher value than going right, then going up has to be optimal. Going right cannot be optimal because then if I do the max, only one will appear, the other one will not appear. Yeah. So one other thing. So I've been talking only about deterministic optimal policies, right? I said there are like there are twelve elements and there are two options there. Need not be. So as long as I have a policy which assigns only non-zero probabilities to the optimal actions, right? That's also an optimal policy. So in this state, I can choose with probability 0.5 to go up or probability 0.5 to go right. Right? So 0.5 go up, 0.5 go right that is also an optimal policy. Right? It could be any combination as long as I have 0 probability for going right or going down, right? then I am happy, then it is an optimal policy. Okay? So, there is an infinite number of optimal policies. Hmm? There is an infinite number of optimal policies there. Is it clear? Okay. So, now here is the next question I want to ask. So, given a policy, uh, <laughs> So, given a value function, how will you recover an optimal policy from that? Suppose I give you V star, so how will you recover an optimal policy from that? So I have to now figure out what action I have to take in each state, right? And I have to take that action that achieves the the max, right? So what I mean by achieves the max? So in the case of V star, I should take an action, figure out where I will land up at, right? And take that action that gives me the max over that, 
right. So, what I mean by where I land up at? So, I pick some action, right, then I sum over S prime. Sorry. Right. So, this is the utility for taking an action, right. So, I have to pick an action that gives me the So, given a V star, this is how I will recover a pi star, right. Yeah, depends on how you de how you implement the arg max, right? If the arg max, you can write it such a way that it will return any of the maximizers, and then you will get a deterministic policy, or you can return your arg max such that it returns all the maximizers. Then you can think of uniform. having some kind of uni whatever some some probability distribution over the maximizers. It can be uniform, or it could be one way or the other. But if you think of arg max as returning some arbitrarily returning one one of the maximizers, you will get a deterministic policy, right? This is one way of recovering optimal policies from the optimal value function ok. So, it is a little tricky right I still need to know p and I still need to know the expected values and other things even if somebody gives me the value function I still need to know the rest of the parameters of the MDP for me to recover the optimal policy. But suppose somebody gives me the q function how will I recover the optimal policy? If you think about look at the expression there right in the arg max is exactly this right. So, so if I give you the q functions if I give you q star I do not need all this that what I am doing there is essentially looking ahead one step right. If I do a ok what will happen right. So, I am looking at the outcome and then trying to make the decision the best decision based on that outcome right. But here in the q star I do not even have to do that one step look ahead right I can just be greedy with respect to my current q star and I will get pi star okay. make sense right. So, if I give you v star and q star now we can know how to find pi star ok. And we also we, we spoke about how you can solve the Bellman equation for v pi and q pi. Can you solve the Bellman equation like that for V star and Q star? So, I have a set system of n equations in n variables, same thing as before. Can I solve it? What is the problem? It is not linear, right? So, it is I have this max here which makes it a non linear system of equations. So, we will have to figure out how we are going to solve it, right? So, this is what we will look at in the next class. So, next class what I will do is first show that uh, well in multiple ways show that v pi is unique and then show that v star is unique right and then come up with a and, uh, and talk about multiple ways of solving for v star and uh, well not necessarily v pi you can solve, but we will talk about multiple ways of solving for v star ok. In fact, the rest of the course in some sense is figuring out multiple ways of solving for v star and q star under different assumptions ok how much information you have how much data you have and so on and so forth right. So, great so any questions so far, so we are done.